Hey everyone, uh, this is my today's topic, uh, the hidden cost of feature flags, understanding and managing adoption challenge. Uh, okay, so uh, earlier before me, many people have already like mentioned uh, a lot of things about feature flags. So uh, I'm quite a little bit in overall right now because this is uh, the first time I'm speaking. And uh, <laughs> so uh, thank you. So let's get started. So. So, hey everyone, I'm Shreya Shivratrivar. I'm from Pune, India. I'm 21 years old. And uh, currently, I'm in my seventh semester, plus I'm a product designer. So, that was about me. So, let's get started. Uh, all of you know, like, <laughs> till now, all of you know, obviously, like, what feature flags are, right? So, uh, here are a few advantages I've mentioned, or rather the use cases of feature flags. Uh, just now, we had, uh, like, a great talk about a b testing what a b testing and why a b testing right so um, we know what feature flag is the toggle basically so uh, we can uh, any feature can be deployed without re uh, without rewriting the code uh, that to uh, safely to the production and feature flags are also used in a b testing and it can enhance the overall developer experience as well so that was about like feature flags use cases and moving forward Okay, so here are the hidden costs of feature flags. Um, out of many, I've mentioned three here. So um, complexity in version management, impact on user uh, experience and support, performance and technical debt, all right? So uh, I'll just, I'll give a brief about each and every uh, like hidden costs here. So let's get started with that. Uh, starting with the first one, complexity in version management, right? <clears throat> multiple states for each uh, application versions. There are like many active uh, flags at a, uh, at the same time, so it becomes difficult to uh, name uh, to name the version uh, in a traditional uh, versioning system. So this is the first complexity we can face while uh, in version management. Plus uh, the second one is backward uh, backward compatibility uh, backward compatibility issues. So uh, the developer teams like need to make ensure that. Uh, the code is visible to the server side. Uh, the code is visible to server uh, server side clients so that uh, they can access it. But uh, due to the feature flags, it is not possible. So this is the second complexity we can face uh, in uh, feature flags. Okay. So moving next, we have impact on user experience and support. How users are impacted because of the feature flags and also the support team. So fragmented user experience. Uh, users at uh, different flag states can have varying experiences uh, that can lead to uh, eventually lead to the fragmented uh, user experience. So uh, the second one is increased support complexity. Uh, increased support co uh, complexity basically uh, support team needs to like uh, dive deeper into uh, to make the user experience better. So that is the second uh, second impact on user experience and support. The third one uh, is potential for feature fatigue among the users. If you are like uh, shipping every, uh, if you are shipping feature every uh, like uh, now and then, feature uh, like uh, users are going to be overwhelmed by <coughs> users are going to overwhelmed by like uh, the new features coming now every now and then. So this can create uh, the potential of uh, feature fatigue among the users as well. Okay, so moving forward, <laughs> technical debt. Uh, like uh, in many of talks, I've heard people talking about technical debt. So uh, unused obsolete flags increase co uh, code complexity, right? So uh, if uh, if the flag has served its, its purpose up till now and it's still there in the code base, then uh, it in, it can increase like uh, code complexity and it can add to the date code as well. So uh, this is uh, this can just <laughs> contribute to technical debt. Uh, this is uh, the first thing. The second is extra maintenance burden for development teams, uh, as as the development teams ha like have to work on the bugs and stuff. So uh, it will be like uh, uh, difficult for them to to work upon it. So moving next, testing complexity. More uh, more the feature flags, you'll have to write more test cases for a them. So uh, exponential growth in test cases due to the multiple flags is uh, is also there. Then increased your burden and risk of untested scenarios. Since feature flags has like uh, many uh, different parts, so if you will be uh, if you are if you are like writing many if you are if you are having like many feature flags, uh, there will be a few parts which are untested uh, untested and uh, can. <clears throat> 
increase burden on the QATM as well. So further, we have like uh, earlier I have mentioned the complexities. Uh, now we can uh, just uh, see how we can manage them. So use version control for flag configurations. Uh, storing flag configurations alongside uh, in the version control alongside the code base can help track the uh, code changes in the version as well. Then uh, the second is document flag lifecycle introduction, rollout, and retirement. Um, documenting uh, <coughs> documenting the flag lifecycle can uh, reduce the misuse and also can uh, help clean up the stealth flags as well. Uh, the third one is clean up stealth flags regularly. Obviously, obviously, I have like mentioned earlier, if you have stealth flags in your code, it can like increase the burden on uh, developer teams. So, this is the third one. Uh, let's move further. Implement rigorous governance policies. Define criteria for flag usage. Um, if like if you're actually needing the flag in your project, then and then only you should implement it. Otherwise, uh, if there's an option to not, then you shouldn't. Then uh, limit flags to major user facing changes, like similar as above. Then schedule reg uh, regular audits and expiration dates. If your uh, flags are having uh, like expiration dates, then it is like easier for the developer teams as well to uh, they don't have to code like um, to uh, to remove the bugs or anything like that. So uh, if your flags are having expiration dates, that's that's very cool. Then cache frequently flags to reduce uh, latency. Uh, cache the feature flags evaluations to reduce latency and um, uh, especially the flags which have like <clears throat> frequent checking and also the slow evaluation times. You should just uh, cache them together. So after that, use automated testing for critical flag states, and uh, you should uh, you should just uh, uh, take help of automation to uh, cover the critical flag states. Uh, and there are also like many integration tools that that could help for testing uh, testing cases. And the third is setting uh, set up stretching environments to validate flag behavior. Um, <clears throat> Setting up the uh, setting up uh, environment and uh, to simulate the feature flag states can uh, uh, help you like uh, to to see the performance compatibility uh, of the uh, feature flags. So um, I would like to conclude here, since yeah. So to the conclusion, we have uh, feature flags over flexibility, uh, but add hidden costs uh, as well. Um, effective governance and lifecycle management are crucial. Uh, the hardest treat feature flags with the same rigor as the code changes. So uh, thank you, everyone. Y'all can connect me here. Mm, so. <laughs>